In 7 minutes you'll learn about the types of cholinergic agonists, and we will discuss the direct-acting cholinergic drugs, their actions, uses and brand names. Please before going through this lecture, make sure that you've watched the previous videos, especially the autonomic receptors video, as this lecture depends on your previous knowledge. Cholinergic agonists mimic acetylcholine actions in the body. And they are classified into two main groups, direct acting and indirect acting cholinergic drugs. As we knew from the previous lecture, acetylcholine binds to muscarinic or nicotinic receptors on the effector organ producing a response within the cell, and then degraded by acetylcholine esterase enzyme in the synaptic cleft. So we can notice that there are two ways for the cholinergic agonist to work. Either by binding to the receptor, then it'll be called direct acting cholinergic agonist. Or inhibits acetylcholine esterase, so increase the effect of acetylcholine indirectly, and that is called indirect acting cholinergic agonist. In this lecture we will discuss the direct acting cholinergic agonists. The first one of course is acetylcholine itself. It is a quaternary ammonium compound that cannot penetrate membranes. It lacks therapeutic importance because of two reasons, the first one, it has diffuse effects as it is the neurotransmitter of parasympathetic, and somatic nerves, as well as autonomic ganglia. And the second, it's rapidly inactivated by cholinesterases. But it can be used locally as an ophthalmic solution, it is available with the brand name, Myakali. Its actions are the same as we discussed before in parasympathetic actions, and that is because it acts on both muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. And the actions in brief are, decrease in heart rate and cardiac output, decrease in blood pressure, and in the gastrointestinal tract, acetylcholine increases salivary secretion and stimulates intestinal secretions and motility, bronchoconstriction and increase bronchiolar secretions. In the urinary bladder, increases the tone of the detrezor muscle, causing urination. In the eye, acetylcholine is involved in stimulation of ciliary muscle contraction for near vision, and in the constriction of the circular muscle, causing meiosis. Acetylcholine 1% solution is instilled into the anterior chamber of the eye to produce meiosis during ophthalmic surgery. To overcome acetylcholine problems, Two modifications have been developed. Making a carbamate ester, to resist hydrolysis by acetylcholine esterase. And, or, making beta methylation, to make the product more selective to muscarinic receptors. Carbagol, is an ester of carbamic acid, so it is not hydrolyzed by acetylcholine esterase. Although it is inactivated through hydrolysis by other esterases but at a much slower rate but still has muscarinic and nicotinic actions. Because of its high potency, receptor non-selectivity, and relatively long duration of action, carbacol is rarely used therapeutically, except in the eye as a meiotic agent to treat glaucoma by causing pupillary contraction and a decrease in intraocular pressure, and it is available with the brand names, myostat and isoptocarbacol. And at doses used ophthalmologically, little or no side effects occur, due to lack of systemic penetration. Methicillin has a beta-methyl group, that makes it selective to muscarinic receptors. But still can be hydrolyzed by acetylcholine esterase. Due to its bronchoconstriction activity it is used to diagnose bronchial hyperactivity, which is the hallmark of asthma and also occurs in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It is available with the brand name Provicolin. Other therapeutic uses are limited by its adverse cardiovascular effects, such as bradycardia and hypotension, which arise from its function as a cholinomimetic. So, why don't we develop a product with both additions, the carbamate ester and beta methylation? This product is called bethanogol. It is not hydrolyzed by acetylcholine esterase, although it is inactivated through hydrolysis by other esterases. It is selective to muscarinic receptors. Its major actions are on the smooth muscles of the bladder and GI tract. It has about a one hour duration of action. It directly stimulates muscarinic receptors, causing increased intestinal motility and tone. 
It also stimulates the detrusor muscle of the bladder causing urination. So it is used to stimulate the atonic bladder, particularly in postpartum or postoperative, non-obstructive urinary retention. It may also be used to treat neurogenocatoni as well as megacolon. It is available with the brand name Uracolon. But it causes some adverse effects because of its generalized cholinergic stimulation. These include sweating, salivation, flushing, decreased blood pressure, nausea, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and bronchospasm. Atropine sulfate may be administered to overcome severe cardiovascular or bronchoconstrictor responses to bethanogol. And the final drug we'll talk about in the direct acting cholinergic drug is pilocarpine. The alkaloid bilocarpine is a tertiary amine, and that means it can penetrate the CNS. It exhibits muscarinic activity and is used primarily in ophthalmology. It is not hydrolyzed by acetylcholine esterase. Applied topically to the eye, pilocarpine produces rapid meiosis and contraction of the ciliary muscle. It stimulates secretions such as sweat, tears, and saliva. It is used for promoting salivation in patients with dry mouth, which is known as xerostomia. It is available with the brand name Saligan. Pilocarpine is used to treat glaucoma and is the drug of choice for emergency lowering of intraocular pressure of both open angle and closed angle glaucoma. Its action occurs within a few minutes, and lasts 4 to 8 hours, and can be repeated. And it is available with the brand name Isoptocarpine. That's all for this lecture. In the upcoming lecture, we will discuss the indirect acting cholinergic agonists. Download the PDF of this lecture from the link down in the description, and follow us on social media to easily get our newest videos.